One of the many important functions of our endocrine system is to control blood osmolarity, is to control the amount of blood volume and the blood pressure inside our vessels. Now, one mechanism by which our body can basically increase the blood pressure when the blood pressure drops in our body is by following a pathway known as the renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway or system. And what this system basically does is it increases the blood volume, it increases the blood pressure inside our blood vessels. So let's discuss how this pathway actually works and let's begin by discussing a portion of the kidney known as the juxtaglomerular apparatus. So this is basically a structure that consists of three different types of cells. Now two of these different types of cells are the macula densa cells and the juxtaglomerular cells. And these two different types of cells basically have their own unique function. So basically, when our blood volume drops inside our vessels, when our blood pressure drops, and when the perfusion rate inside our kidneys drops, that simply means when the rate at which our fluid is passing through the kidneys drops, this causes our macula densa cells to basically release a prostaglandin that travels to our our juxtaglomerular cells and this causes those cells to release an enzyme called renin. Now note that juxtaglomerular cells don't have to be activated, they don't have to be stimulated by the macula densa to actually release renin. That is, they can release renin independently without being stimulated by the macula densa cells. So basically, this apparatus, the juxtaglomerular apparatus, contains special types of cells that can sense a drop in blood volume, a drop in blood pressure. And these cells release renin into our blood system. So if we take a look at the following diagram, a low blood volume, a low blood pressure, and a low kidney perfusion rate basically positively stimulates the kidneys to produce and release our renin enzyme into our bloodstream. Now at the same exact time, the liver, the cells inside the liver basically produce a zymogen enzyme known as angiotensinogen. Now, this is released into our bloodstream and when this ang uh, uh, angiotensinogen mixes with our renin, the renin basically cleaves this zymogen at a specific location on that amino acid sequence and it activates the angiotensinogen into the angiotensin 1 form. So basically, once, the, once in the bloodstream, renin goes on to activate the zymogen angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 by cleaving it proteolytically at a specific position along the amino acid sequence. Angiotensinogen is produced inside our liver cells. Now, once we activate the angiotensin 1, it basically goes on, travels through our blood system, and eventually ends up at lung cells as well as in our kidney cells and once it's found in those cells the cells basically contain a special type of enzyme known as ACE which stands for angiotensin converting enzyme and what that enzyme basically does is it converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2 by basically cleaving two residues on that particular enzyme so angiotensin 1 hormone then travels to lung cells and kidney cells there an enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE basically transforms angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Now, angiotensin 2 is basically one of the final products of this pathway because it itself can actually stimulate our blood vessels to constrict and it also stimulates the increase in our blood volume and blood pressure inside our blood vessels. Now, the question is, how exactly does it achieve this? Well, once angiotensin 2 is produced and released into our bloodstream, what happens is it basically goes on 
respond to special cells inside our adrenal cortex known as the zona glomerulosa. And this zone, this region that contains these special types of cells basically releases our hormone known as aldosterone. And aldosterone, as we know from our discussion on the adrenal cortex, basically causes our kidneys to become more permeable to certain ions. So the rate at which sodium and the uh, chloride increases, so the rate at which these two ions travel back into the plasma increases, and we excrete more potassium and hydrogen ions. And what this creates is a net movement of ions back into the blood, and this forces more water to be reabsorbed by the blood. So this increases the amount of blood volume inside our blood and this causes increase in our blood pressure. Now, what the angiotestin 2 also does is it basically goes on and stimulates the release of the antidiuretic hormone ADH that is stored inside the posterior pituitary gland and produced by the hypothalamus. So, uh, ADH, also known as vasopressin, basically causes our kidneys to reabsorb more water. It becomes more permeable to water, the cell membrane, and so water Water increases inside our blood plasma and this increases our blood pressure inside our blood vessel. Now angiotensin 2 actually also constricts our blood vessels and that causes an increase inside our uh, blood vessels. So more specifically it causes the constriction of our arterioles throughout the body as well as inside our kidneys. Now, when our, in, when our blood pressure increases, when our blood volume increases, the increase in the blood volume can basically create a negative feedback loop and that will basically go on and cause our renin to start being secreted by the kidneys. So, let's take a look at the following diagram that basically describes, summarizes the renin angiotestin aldosterone system. So, let's suppose inside our blood we have a low volume of blood plasma, we have low blood pressure and that means we have a low perfusion rate inside our kidneys. So this will basically cause special types of cells known as juxtaglomerular cells inside the kidneys to release our enzyme known as renin. And at the same time liver cells produce and release a zymogen known as angiotensinogen into the bloodstream and when these two mix, Mix, the renin will basically cleave our angiotensinogen and form angiotensin 1. Now, once we form angiotensin 1, it will then travel into lung cells and also into kidney cells and it will be activated by using the angiotensin converting enzyme into angiotensin 2. And then angiotensin 2 basically goes on to activate the ADH, the vasopressin release by the posterior pituitary, which causes our kidneys to become more permeable to water water and reabsorb more water into our blood vessels. Now it also causes the release of aldosterone which basically causes our kidneys also to reabsorb more water by creating a net movement of ions back into the blood and it also constricts our arterioles which increases our blood pressure. So all these three effects result in an increase in blood volume, increase in blood flow rate, our perfusion rate inside our kidney, and also increases our blood pressure. And when our blood pressure increases, that can basically react in a negative feedback loop to cause our kidneys, the juxtaglomerular cells, to stop releasing renin. And this is basically how we control our blood pressure inside our body. This is the method by which the endocrine system can basically control the blood level, the blood osmolarity, as well as our blood pressure inside our body.